It's only a moment, isn't it, in a lifetime. We seem, it seems that suffering goes on forever, but in fact it's apparent a comparatively short time. If we're really chanting, we know we'll break through much quicker than would otherwise be the case. So winter is always followed by spring, the Gosho said. Changing karma is sometimes a little painful, but never more than we can stand. As Nichiren Daishonin said, the best medicine is often bitter. So, of course, too, the person who, who is actually the instrument for one's changing one's karma is a very important person. We may feel we dislike them intensely, we hate them even, but if we practice to the Gohonzon in the end, we feel immense gratitude to them. Just as Nichiren Daishonin felt gratitude to Shofubo and gratitude to Heino Simon because they were the instrument for him to expiate his past slanders. And I guess there are many people in this room who at first perhaps even hating someone eventually chanted to the Gohonzon in gratitude to them because they were the purpose by which they saw their karma and changed it. This is an amazing thing. So, in this respect, he talks about the boy who was thrashed by a boxwood bow. I love this story. Of course, he's not here advocating corporal punishment. Not in the least. But he's using this story as an example of the instrument that helped that boy to change his karma. The instrument was the boxwood bow used by his father to thrash him. And he was so grateful to the boxwood bow that this man actually built a stupa. So this story is emphasizing that jihi, jihi meaning Buddhist mercy, is not necessarily soft or gentle. Mercy, if it's true mercy, has to be expressed sometimes very firmly and very strongly. It's true, isn't it, that we discover as life goes on that one's best friend is the person who speaks straight to us. Though in speaking straight, it may be for a moment painful. This is similar to the way in which Buddhist mercy works. So I know uh, when members want guidance, sometimes uh, there's almost a tendency inside one try to think of a person who will give you gentle guidance. You sort of avoid going to the person who may be strict with you. You shop around, <laughs> saying to yourself, who could I best relate to? But what really we're meaning is, who's going to be most easy with me? <laughs> Nevertheless, as you know in the Gosho it says, a sword is useless in the hands of a coward. The mighty sword of the Lotus Sutra must be wielded by one courageous in faith. So really we should go to the person who we believe will speak most wisely and most directly to us. Then we can really do our human revolution and change our lives. So I hear, for example, that Kazuo Fuji often gives very strict direct guidance. So why don't you all go to him? If you do, maybe United Kingdom in a few years' time will be full of statues of him. <laughs> I'd like to go back now uh, to that second chapter because we have yet to consider the reverse relationship, which is so important. And Nichiren Daishonin begins to explain this through this amazingly lurid story about the jealous woman. I've never seen anyone in quite that state, I'm happy to say. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> so, uh, this is an extraordinarily important principle because what it is saying, as you understand, 
is that even if a person slanders the Gohonzon, or the Lotus Sutra as it's termed here, what is important is that they have actually established a relationship with the Gohonzon, even though it's a negative one. The important thing is the actual establishment of the relationship. So through the workings of cause and effect, because a person has established a relationship, albeit a negative one, in time, without a shadow of doubt, it may take a long time, it may be a short time, they will begin to see that whenever they slander the Gohonzon, something goes wrong with their life. At first, they won't connect it. But in the end, some realization will come to them and cause them to stop in their tracks and begin to wonder. So this is both the power and the mercy of the law of nam myoho One must understand that that law is always working to create happiness and value. It's always working to create a vibrant, harmonious, and progressive universe and a vibrant, harmonious, and progressive planet Earth. This can only be achieved, of course, if the lives on that Earth, both in nature and in the human family, are also vibrant, harmonious, and happy. In a sense, you could say it's similar to the way in which the Gohonzon works when you chant for something which is not, in fact, for your happiness. But through your relationship with the Gohonzon, because even a reverse relationship still is activating wisdom, you begin to understand and you change direction. So whichever way you approach the Gohonzon, whether negative or positively, in the end it will bring value into one's life. This is incredible, isn't it? But in a sense, you could look at it from the point of view of a compassionate person. If a person who is very compassionate is insulted and attacked by someone else, they may for a moment be upset, but quite quickly they'll feel pity for that person rather than feeling angry and wanting revenge. And they'll desire more than anything else to make that person happy. This is the act, isn't it, of a compassionate person. It is also the act of the law of life called nam myoho So, to give an example, uh, let's take this time a jealous husband. A jealous husband can really detest the fact that his wife is spending time in front of the Gons and chanting Daimoku instead of uh, looking after him. So, he really gets furious and goes out in his car and has an accident. He doesn't think anything of that, no connection at all. But on another occasion, he again gets furious at his wife because of her activities or her practice. And shortly after, he loses his job. Probably again, he doesn't connect the two. He does it again, and perhaps next time, falls sick. In the end, through this sequence of circumstances, he will at last begin to feel that he is the one who's doing something wrong. And he'll search his mind and probably in the end begin to wonder if it's because he's attacking his wife's religious beliefs and practice. Also, in this paragraph, Nitrin Daishonin is pointing out the exactness of the law of cause and, f cause and effect its absolute preciseness. 
in that the effect of any cause is in exact relationship down to the nth detail, one might say. So even uh, the woman who uh, was jealous of her husband in this story, she attacked his practice, but actually it was because she was, she hated him, not the practice itself. But her feet were the ones that trampled on the Lotus Sutra or trampled on the Gohonsen. It was her feet that established the relationship actually with the Gohonsen itself. So Nichiren Daishonin is saying, in the end, it will be those feet by the law of cause and effect that bring her to meet the Gohonsen again and to ultimately attain enlightenment. This is extraordinary, isn't it? But this is the law of cause and effect, which is so precise and exact. So how those feet would bring her, we don't know. But perhaps she had to walk an awful long way <laughs> to her first discussion meeting. <laughs> so of course this principle is incredibly important for us in respect to Shakabuku, to teaching others about Buddhism. It means that we should sow seeds wherever we go, which is what Sensei asked us to do when the SGI was founded on the meeting at Guam Island in 1975. We cannot prejudge who we should speak to and who we shouldn't speak to. We should not prejudge whether this person will practice or whether he won't. And that takes one immediately to what Sensei said to us in 1981 on European Summer Course, which was that we should talk to everyone about Buddhism, whether or not they listen to what we say. I was deeply moved at the 4th SGI General Meeting two weeks or so ago in Japan when uh, one of the leaders of Nichiren Shosho of America, Guy McCloskey, who's the, what they call the Territory Chief uh, of Washington Territory, gave a determination on behalf of NSA. And in this determination, he said, we are determined that we shall not rest until every single American has the opportunity to hear about nam myoho This is an incredible, wonderful spirit, isn't it? This should be our spirit. How many times have all of us, including me, found ourselves prejudging? Oh, I don't think it's any good talking to him or to her. They'll just, you know, reject us like that or they just won't be interested. So and so will never practice. How can I ever get my mother to practice? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Who is there in this room that hasn't done it? But it's no good, is it? Here Nichiren Daishonin is teaching us about the reverse relationship. What is important is the reverse relationship. Even when the person you're talking to rejects or slanders the practice, you have established in them the relationship, which is what is the most important thing of all. One day, therefore, the seed is sown and they are bound to practice. So I do hope everyone in NSUK will remember this and that our spirit can be the same as the spirit of that leader in America. To make sure that every single person in the United Kingdom Every single person in our city or our village or our town or in our family will have the opportunity to hear about the Gohonsan and Nam myoho So this spirit we must achieve within ourselves. It's a battle, isn't it, within our own individual lives. Then we shall greatly advance the movement for 
coast of Nufu in the UK. We have to do it for the sake of ourselves and for the sake of others, the people who live in this country. Right, we'll now go on to the next paragraph. <clears throat> the fifth volume contains the heart of the Lotus Sutra, for it reveals that the Dragon King's daughter attained Buddhahood without changing her dragon form. Devadatta represents the spiritual aspect of enlightenment, and the Dragon King's daughter the physical aspect. The principle of attaining Buddhahood in one's present form can be found nowhere else in Shakyamuni's teaching. The great teacher Dengyo enumerated ten outstanding principles in which the Lotus Sutra surpasses all others. One of them is attaining Buddhahood as a common mortal. This is the most important doctrine of the Tendai sect, and a section of the Hokke Mongu is entitled The Supreme Principle of Attaining Buddhahood as a Common Mortal. It is also a point of controversy between the Shingon and Tendai sects. The Dragon King's daughter attained enlightenment through the power of the Lotus Sutra. Bodhisattva Monju stated, I always proclaim and teach only the Lotus Sutra. The words only and always are the key to this quotation. However, the Bodhishinron reads, the principle of attaining Buddhahood in one's present form is found only in the teachings of Shingon, which only is correct. The Bodhishinron must be mistaken. The Muryogi Sutra states, in these more than 40 years, I have not yet revealed the truth. The Lotus Sutra reads, the world honored one has long expounded his doctrines and now must reveal the truth. Taho Buddha affirmed that only the Lotus Sutra enables one to attain Buddhahood as a common mortal when he said, all that you, Shakyamuni Buddha, have expounded is the truth. No matter how repeatedly the believers in provisional doctrines may insist that one can attain enlightenment through the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings, it is as easy to refute their assertions as it is to smash a thousand pieces of earthenware with a single hammer. Tiantai states, the practice of the Lotus Sutra is shakabuku, the refutation of the provisional te doctrines. The Lotus Sutra indeed is the most profound and secret teaching. Thank you. So at this time, uh, apart from Nichiren Daishonin, having of course undergone so many persecutions in his lifetime, Nanjo Tokimitsu, to whom this letter was written, was also, at that time, suffering severely. Uh, the authorities were putting immense pressure on him through overtaxing him and taking away his land in order to try to get him to cease supporting Nichiren Daishonin. So, it, it, the records show that Nanjo uh, had a very big family no less than nine sons and four daughters. So, uh, of course, when he was 20, when this Gosha was sent, I don't think he could have had quite as many children as that. But nevertheless, no doubt, since they married very young in their early teens in, that day, in, in those days in Japan, no doubt he already had several children. And in fact, at that time, other Goshas show quite clearly that poor Nanjo, although he was a feudal lord, was in a state of absolute poverty. Despite that, he kept on always making contributions, sending food or writing materials or whatever little he could afford to Nichiren Daishonin. He truly was a great young man uh, and a great young man of faith. Now in the first part of this Gosho, Nichiren Daishonin was specifically referring to his own persecutions. But in this part of the Gosho, he begins to really encourage Nanjo Tokamitsu so that he can ride through all these sufferings and never lose faith. In this particular section, the middle section, uh, he's really referring to documentary or historical proof. Nichiren Daishonin is proving uh, through uh, historical or literary proof that the Lotus Sutra was supreme and that all these other people who are following the teachings of other sects uh, are, in a way, doing something which is as useless, as he says in the next paragraph, as yesterday's meal or last year's calendar. 
So this is to encourage Nanjo, to remind him that he's practicing the true teachings for this age and that he should never give up. And right at the end, if you can turn to the end, Nichiren Daishonin has an afterthought. He writes as if he's ending his letter with my deep respect. And then suddenly he puts in this beautiful paragraph to encourage Nanjo and his family to practice no matter what. Maybe you could read it, John. As you crave food when hungry, seek water when thirsty, long to see a lover, beg for medicine when ill, or as a beautiful woman desires powder and rouge, so should you put your faith in the Lotus Sutra. If you do not, you will regret it later. Nichiren. Such a wonderful paragraph and can relate to anyone's life. But is this really what our desire to practice is like? Probably often not. But in this respect, it's interesting that this postscript is preceded by a number of paragraphs which are very, very much concerned with study, with proof that this is the true teachings for this age, with proof that Nichiren Daishonin is the votary of the Lotus Sutra for this age. And subsequently, when we come to the last paragraph, also the original Buddha. So study is very important. If we neglect study, it's unlikely that we shall be able to maintain the desire to practice, which is given in those few lines. Without study, we are missing essential food for our life. Study is the food, you might say, which gives us the energy, the desires to really advance our lives through these teachings and to practice as if we were begging for medicine when we were ill or longing to see a lover. It's good to remind ourselves of those few lines. Then he goes on to talk about the Dragon King's daughter and David Dutta. The Dragon King's daughter and David Dutta appear in the Lotus Sutra to illustrate that everyone, whatever their form or style of life, has the Buddha state innately within them and can attain enlightenment as a result. Enlightenment, of course, in accordance with Nichiren Daishonin's teachings, not after eons and eons and eons of practice, as was the case with people born in the time of Shakyamuni or in the former and middle days of the law. But in the latter day of the law, uh, enlightenment in one lifetime through following the teachings of the Buddha of that age. Nichiren Daishonin taught the practice of the Gonzen and Namyo Harengyakyo. Through this, he continuously says, even though we remain with the appearance of a common mortal, we can actually attain Buddhahood. Every single person, if they like to make the effort to do so, and if their karma permits them to listen to the true teachings. So the Dragon King's daughter, uh, you could say was an ordinary girl with no great education but through practicing uh, she could attain Buddhahood without changing her appearance of an ordinary girl with not so great an education. Devadatta who was the cousin of Shakyamuni Buddha and tried to kill him by various means because he was so intensely jealous of him represents evil men, even evil men, have the Buddha state within them and can attain Buddhist Buddhahood if they so wish. So no one is segregated in that respect. This is another reason, isn't it, why we should shakabuku, 
no matter what, wherever we go, without discrimination and without prejudging. So uh, Nichiren Daishonin is saying to Lord Nanjo, don't despair because of your difficulties. I know you've got a big family and you're really struggling to live, but keep your faith. You can definitely attain Buddhahood in this lifetime. You've made so many great causes already. Never mind what bad causes you may have made in the past. Never mind what your lifestyle is now. What matters is Honinmyo. Making the causes now, today and tomorrow and the next day to create your future. This is really the sort of thing he's saying to him in this Gosha. Dragon King's daughter also represents the physical aspect of enlightenment. That is to say, she makes uh, no change in her outward appearance. Whereas David Data's dark secrets are a spiritual thing within him. But even there, the spiritual aspect of enlightenment is shown. Even David Data had the potential to attain Buddhahood, no matter what he'd done in his past. So Nishin Daishonin is saying, why should you doubt, Nanjo? You've done such great activities and great things always for Buddhism. And then he goes on, Nishin Daishonin, to chastise those sects who are misleading the people by saying theirs is the way to enlightenment. When they're following sutras that were prior to the Lotus Sutra, Sutras which never taught that everybody could attain enlightenment. Only the Lotus Sutra taught that all people had Buddhahood within them. So I think this very much emphasizes the way, the way in which this Gosho is set out, how important study is, to give us a depth of understanding. The next paragraphs onwards, uh, in this middle section, are all supporting this statement, all continuing to encourage Nanja Tokimitsu with documentary reference to prove that what Nichiren Daishonin is teaching is the true teachings for this age. And also that Nichiren Daishonin himself must be Bodhisattva Jogyo, the leader of the Bodhisattva of the earth, who appears in the ceremony of the air in the Lotus Sutra, and to whom Shakyamuni transfers the teachings for the age of the latter day of the law. Now, I don't intend to go on with that now, and we'll ask John to read now uh, the paragraph beginning, the Yujutsu chapter also explains. The Yujutsu chapter also explains. First chapter on page 305 in volume 2, and the middle chapter uh, on page 3 of the photocopied material. Okay, John. The Yujutsu chapter also explains something about me because it states that Bodhisattva Jogyo and others will appear in the latter day of the law to propagate the five characters of nam myoho renge -kyo. I, Nichiren, have appeared earlier than anyone else. How reassuring to think that I will surely be praised by Bodhisattvas equal in number to the sands of 60,000 Ganges rivers. Be that as it may, commit yourself to the Lotus Sutra and have faith in its teachings. You must not only believe in them yourself, but also encourage others to do the same, so that you may save your deceased parents and ancestors. So in that paragraph he refers to his, what we call his transient appearance as Bodhisattva Jogyo. That is to say he fulfills all the predictions that the votary of the Lotus Sutra, who is Bodhisattva Jogyo, uh, will have to undergo uh, in his lifetime at the beginning of the latter day of the law. And then in this next paragraph, which John will read, Nichiren Daishonin 
starts to infer to Nanjo that he is in fact, in fact, uh, the original Buddha, the person who was self-enlightened to the true law. From the time that I was born until today, I, Nichiren, have never known a moment's ease. I have thought only of propagating the Daimoku of the Lotus Sutra. I do not know how long I or anyone else may live, but without fail, I will be with you at the time of your death and guide you from this life to the next. All the Buddhas of the past, present and future attain enlightenment between the hours of the ox and the tiger. In all three countries of India, China and Japan, the place of Buddhist practice is located to the northeast in the direction of the demon gate. These are secret teachings of Buddhism which are reverently transferred from master to disciple. I will explain in more detail later. Thank you. So he says that these are secret teachings. Uh, he had to talk in a very veiled and indirect way about his actual identity as the original Buddha. Because if anyone had seen this or understood it, who was not a really close follower, Nichiren Daishonin and his followers would have suffered even more persecutions and would probably have been killed. It could not possibly have been understood at that time and would have brought down the greatest persecution on their heads. So this is why such words were kept secret and in some of the Gosho, which penetrated to the depth of Nichiren Daishonin's life and what his true identity was, in those Gosho also, he cautioned the recipient to make sure that they were only shown to people uh, who were really of strong faith, or that they were shown to people never in groups, but person to person, so that the recipient of the Gosho could make sure that the person he was explaining it to really understood it in the depths of his heart. Such precautions had to be taken in those very dangerous times. So Nanjo Tokimitsu was, uh, as we've already said, of strong faith, a great young man supporting Nichiren Daishonin through thick and thin. He also must have been very wise because in another Gosho, Nichiren Daishonin addressed him as Weno the wise. So altogether, I think, a remarkable young man who Nichiren Daishonin totally confided in. So he says in this paragraph, I will be with you at the time of your death and guide you from this life into the next. Here Nichiren Daishonin is uh, referring to the Gohonzon. As you know, Nichiren Daishonin's life, the life of a human being in the Buddha state, is embodied in the Gohons. So without a doubt, Nichiren Daishonin knows that a man of ya a strong faith like Nanjo, when he dies, will be chanting nam myoho kyo and that the Gohons will be with him. Therefore, he says, I will be with you at the time of your death, and I will guide you through the state of death to your next life. We chant nam myoho kyo don't we? At the very ma last moment of our lives. And as a result, we die actually in the Buddha state. Therefore, during the period of latency we call death, we're in the highest possible life state, which would ensure that we are reborn in that same state. In other words, with the Gohons. So this is what Nichiren Daishonin means. And of course, in saying, in expressing this, and referring in a veiled way to the Gohonzon, he is referring that he is the true Buddha who appears in the age of Mapa. Then he goes on, all the Buddhas of the past, present, and future attain enlightenment between the hours of the ox and the tiger. Shakyamuni Buddha attained enlightenment so far as this planet is concerned 
under the Bodhi tree in India. And this enlightenment took place between the hours of the ox and the tiger. Nichiren Daishonin revealed himself as the Buddha who was one with the universe at the time of the Tatsunakuchi persecution, at the time when he was literally in a situation with the executioner's sword poised above his head and he was saved by the forces of the universe from death. This incident at Tatsunokuchi also took place between the hours of the ox and the tiger. In the Gosho called The Opening of the Eyes, Nichiren Daishonin says, a person named Nichiren was beheaded in the middle of the night on the twelfth day of the ninth month last year, but his soul reached Sado Island. In other words, on Tatsunokuchi Beach, he was discarding his uh, his uh, appearance as Bodhisattva Jokyo or the votary of the Lotus Sutra in the age of Mapo and revealing himself as the Buddha who was one with the universe. So he puts it in here as if he was beheaded. And a new Nichiren Daishonin, the very soul of Nichiren Daishonin, traveled on to Sado Island. And indeed, in the Goshos that were written, after the Tatsunokuchi persecution, he more and more conveys in indirect terms about the truth of his life. So the hour of the ox is between one o'clock and three o'clock in the morning. And the hour of the tiger is between three o'clock and five o'clock. The hour of the ox and tiger covers the period between one o'clock and five o'clock in the morning. So in accordance with the teachings of Buddhism, this is the time of most delicate balance in the universe. And it is always followed by a natural tendency to tilt towards the positive or towards yang as opposed to yin. This is in the very nature of the rhythm of the universe. It's also described in other teachings of Buddhism as the time of that life moves from sleep to waking. Not just human life, the life of the universe. Or the time life moves from death back to life. In another Gosho, the most crucial period is stated as being between five minutes to three in the morning and twenty past three. This is the time of most perfect balance. When a negative or positive cause has the greatest possible effect. So this is why Ushitora Gongyo exists. Ushi means ox. Tora means tiger. So Ushitora Gongyo has been performed by the high priest, supported by other priests in the head temple, without a break for more than 700 years now. Every night between the hours of the ox and the tiger. Every night between those hours, the high priest and the other priests with him and the lay people who may assemble there chant for Kosen Rufu of the world. Amazing thought. So the high priest's daily working program begins at 2.30 every morning when Ushitora Gongyo begins. This is the beginning of his day day in, day out, all his lifetime as the high priest. This devotion and dedication is something that we really need to feel so grateful for. And I think when we're on Tozan and sometimes we're able to go to a Shatora Gongyo, we really feel that. I'm sure in times to come, 
most of the world will be grateful for that amazing cause that has been made by those priests uh, night after night without a break for 700 years. So these hours of the ox and tiger are also related to direction. In the wisdom of Buddhism, uh, direction is related to time. It's the relation, in fact, between space and time. So the direction which is related to the ox and tiger is northeast. This is the direction that applies or relates to that time. So in this respect, it's worth noting that Bodh Gaya, where Shakyamuni Buddha sat under the Bodhi tree and attained enlightenment, is in northeast India. And Japan is also to the northeast of India, uh, where Buddhism first appeared on this planet. So in these ways, though they're very veiled and rather indirect, in fact, Nishin Daishonin ends the Gosha by saying, I will explain in more detail later, no doubt when he actually saw Nanjo, he is encouraging him to have faith in the teachings that he's following and in the Gohonsu. And then he ends with this wonderful afterthought. Let's read it again. <clears throat> As you crave food when hungry, seek water when thirsty, long to see a lover, beg for medicine when ill, or as a beautiful woman desires powder and rouge, so should you put your faith in the Lotus Sutra. If you do not, you will regret it later. So really, let's try hard to throw our doubts away. Just to end with, uh, I'm thinking now of a lunch we had at Atsuta, which was the place where Mr. Toda lived between the ages of three and 19 years old. All his formative years as a boyhood were spent at this village on the wild coast of Hokkaido, the northern island of Japan. The very hard, rugged winters, uh, which went on for a great many months. Uh, we saw this place, and also there is where the Toda Memorial Park has been created, which is, uh, in fact, a huge cemetery, but an incredibly joyful place. So we had a lunch there, which was given for all the 2,000 or so overseas representatives who, who attended the SGI general meeting and festival. And uh, Sensei, as usual, during a lunch, is always busy, as he always is anyway. One minute he's joking with everyone at the lunch tables, all 2,000 of them, through using the microphone. Next minute he's sending a gift to someone. Next minute. He's waving at somebody and calling some message to them. Next minute, President Akira, President of the Soka Gakkai, is briefing him on everything that's happened in the last 24 hours, and Sensei is giving guidance about what should be done next. Next minute, he's giving guidance to the leaders at the lunch table. This is an incredible thing to watch, because he's using every moment of his life valuably. But on this particular occasion, he looked at all of us, uh, leaders from various countries, about nine of us were sitting at his table. And he said this, I believe some of you still have doubts on occasion. This is a pity, he said. It delays your advance to Buddhahood and the accumulation of good fortune in your lives. My great good fortune is that from the age of 19, when I first met the Gohonsun, and I first met then my master, Mr. Toda, I've never doubted, never even for a single moment. 